Yeah, what do Canadians think about what's going on in the U.S.? This is Think Tech. We're talking to a Canuck in Western Canada, Dr. Ken Rogers, a retired businessman there. Welcome to the show, Ken. Well, you can at least say it right. It's a Canuck. Canuck. Yeah. I, how silly of me. Thank you. Thank you. I stand corrected on that. That's but we okay. have, we have a, you know, a t a many tens of millions, not as many as in the United States, of, of Canucks um, across the border. And, and they get the same TV. They can see the same newspapers, the same websites. And, and uh, they look at the United States through the perspective of being Canadians, which is different because Canadians are nicer people. Am I right? Well, I think so, but uh, but I know a lot of extremely uh, nice Americans. Uh, <laughs> it's just that uh, you seem to have a, a, a large percentage of not so nice uh, Americans. Or, well, you know, you it, look and you see the divisiveness we have. You see the, the dysfunctionality in Congress and the Supreme Court. You see violence in the streets. You see all these immigration problems, uh, economic problems. I mean, we... We seem to have it all lately. And, you know, there's an article in the Times uh, yesterday about how we were leaderless, uh, that no strong leader is correcting any of this. Um, but, I, you know, that's just my view and maybe the view of some of the media in the United States. I just wondered where, where Can Canadians uh, stand. And I, and I have to add that you had this truck strike in Toronto not too long ago. <clears throat> which seemed to reflect the same kind of divisiveness. However, I would mention that the news later reported that the truck strike was organized in the United States and the, and the Canadian truckers were, you know, had been manipulated. But anyway, um, what, what's your thought? You see the newspapers, you see the television. I'm sure you think about us. Um, what's your impression? Well, uh, most of my life, uh, you know, Canadians have thought of Americans as uh, reasonably equal uh, and many, many years uh, envied the United States, where today it's it's really one of feeling sorry for the Americans or, or having pity for them, uh, really, because you got this mixture of, of things that that make the U.S. less attractive than we see Canada as being, uh, you know, where usually, uh, you know, the United States would would lead the world in many things that uh, that one would call um, good for the citizens and good for the world. Well, you really have, um, you know, a mixture of things that that kind of spoil uh, that image. Um, you know, the endless amount of guns and the whole attitude towards guns. Uh, you know, secondly, you've got the, um, the method by which your, your uh, major politicians get elected, like the humongous amount of money that's required and the way it's funded. You really end up with these, uh, you know, very, very rich, biased, uh, wealthy people who want to ha have less tax and less uh, uh, government uh, regulation of their, you know, desire to make more millions of dollars uh, that just makes it so your politicians aren't uh, working in the public good. You know, they're working for the rich elite. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know your healthcare system is is really broken for for at least the the bottom two thirds of your population, in the sense that uh, you know a major cause of bankruptcy in the United States has to do with healthcare. You know in Canada, you know nobody goes bankrupt for any health problem. Uh, you know the most important. Uh, subject for any politician in Canada it, it really is the the health care and how the public uh, you know insists that it be kept and and kept in as good a shape as can be you know it's not ours isn't perfect but uh, it's sure better than the American one so so you really have uh, a variety of things that combine to to um, 
you know, let's say make us feel sorry for the Americans, but the attack on the Capitol really, you know, kind of underlined that, uh, you know, it's just yeah. such I a... Want, I want to focus on that today. We'll, you know, we'll drill down on many of the issues you've touched on. But today, let's talk about the insurrection. Let's talk about the congressional investigation. Well, firstly, the, uh, you know, from the press that we see, a lot of it's the same as yours. There's a, a, a ton of Americans, mainly in the Republican Party or Republican followers, that don't even want to call it an insurrection. Yeah. You know, they're just a bunch of nice tourists going on a tour of the Capitol building. Well, that certainly isn't what you saw on TV. Yeah. I don't know, you know, what... Uh, kind of uh, drugs they're taking to come to that <laughs> conclusion that certainly it's it's totally totally illogical um you know but i think the the hearings are are a pretty superb bit of effort to um let's say get the facts out there uh, you know the average ed educated canadian would would wonder why the heck Donald Trump hasn't been in jail already. And, you know, and, and a bunch of the key players like the, um, I think there was a guy named Miller who was the one that was sup that in charge of deciding what the DC National Guard would do, you mm -hmm. know, and, and apparently, you know, from what we've seen up here is that uh, he had orders from Trump uh, a week or so before the um, uh, January 6th to that not to have the National Guard disrupt his uh, wonderful followers. And, you know, the key reason that the um, attack on the Capitol building was almost a success and, and was in fact as atrocious as it really ended up being and as close to getting people like uh, Mar uh, Pence in, you know, hung from the gallows they had outside, you know, is that, uh, you know, other jurisdictions sent their support rather than the D.C. National Guard, that, you know, was, should have been the backup. You know, yeah, were... it all, it all, um, you know, I just wonder, there was a time, wasn't there, Ken, when when you would have made the comparison between uh, Canada and the U.S. Uh, without pity, in other words, you would find, gee, okay, we're we're similar. We oh have heck, there similar... was more than that. It was even you could look at the U.S. with envy, in many regards. Yeah, I mean, and that would be economic. It would be governmental. It would be mm, all the well, things. Well, that... economic is always a really major factor and that that's the one where the United States still has a pretty wonderful standard of living compared to most countries you know you're no longer the best by far but uh, but certainly you're you're in the top 10 and and i imagine that when you looked uh, south um you felt uh, some confidence in the american legal system is it fair to say that some confidence in the government, some confidence in, in Congress and the Supreme Court um, and, you know, all the executive branch uh, departments and so forth. What was it like, say, before, um, before, you know, we've had these troubles? Well, there was confidence. I mean, everybody always wondered why you had some, some quirks in your system. You know, as I call them, quirks, uh, example, the... Uh, uh, the whole thing about the electoral college, you know, it, it seems like a weird contortion. Um, it does no purpose whatsoever. And, and obviously, you know, the recent events show that all it, all it, all it accomplishes, it creates a vulnerability to the peaceful transfer. Yeah, indeed. So now uh, talking about the, um, the com committee hearings, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about maybe we should not prosecute Trump, um, even though we seem to have a lot of uh, at least circumstantial evidence that, 
that would convict him um, because uh, it would be disruptive to the country and that a um, presidential leader uh, should be left alone so we can move on and try to forget what happened. What's the Canadian, the, you know, generally speaking, what's the view of the Canadian people about that? The guy committed the most heinous crimes, lock him up and throw away the key. <laughs> you don't think that, or people don't think that would be disruptive to the government, that we would be, you know, involved in a, a kind of um, uh, distraction from solving well, let, other problems? Let, let's use a, a slightly Canadian slant. You know, the excuse that Putin used to go into Ukraine. Now, Ukraine has about the same population as Canada. You know, Canadians would think after what we've seen of Trump, what would prevent him from saying, gee, the world could use some potash and extra oil and gas and, and a whole bunch of these precious minerals? Why don't we just take Saskatchewan and Alberta? Those are, you know, two provinces that hold a ton of the kind of resources the world's short of right now. You know, the, the, it, it's just, he's just untrustworthy. He's just not, you know, how anybody could put him in charge of anything or let him out on any kind of leash. Um, it, it's just hard to believe that, uh, you know, and I don't think that, uh, you know, letting Nixon off the hook was, was the right decision back then either. Suppose, uh, suppose you were on a jury and you had the information that we have seen come out on television, you know, in these congressional investigation hearings. Do you think you would have enough to, in your mind, convict Trump? Uh, yes. Yes. You don't even need to go further. I think that, that looks so obvious uh, from, from a Canadian point of view. It just You wonder how come it's taken so long. You know, your your comment about, you know, um, convicting a uh, former president might be, uh, you know, uh, disruptive in many regards, but I think it would be more disruptive not to uh, enforce the rule of law and, and say that nobody's above the law, and in particular, anybody in position, anybody in authority. I mean, I would uh, think that most Canadians would believe that uh, a huge number of these um, uh, Republican uh, senators and congressional people like the Josh Hawley's and, and uh, oh, th there's a whole bunch of them that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they took an oath and they have blatantly broken that oath. They, they should, you know, there should be a method by which you just turf them out. I mean, in the Canadian politics, they have, you know, standard of conduct rules and, you know, they sanction members and, and like the British Parliament, you know, it was the parliamentarians that kicked out Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. Now, fine, there was lots of public pressure, you know, but, you know, they they were just embarrassed. Well, Boris Johnson didn't do anything as disgraceful as Trump. And I'm sure it's true. So if the, you know, I wanted to ask that, you that's about my that. unbiased opinion, of course. Well, but your unbiased opinion is that of a Canadian who talks to a lot of people who has a lot of connection with, you know, the the the, the Can Canadian sensibilities on these things. And I find it interesting you talk about Josh Hawley, and he's not the only one where. Again, um, there's direct and circumstantial <laughs> circumstantial evidence linking him um, with the effort to overthrow the election. And in my view, that means overthrow the government. You know, to overthrow the peaceful transition of power um, is to overthrow the government, uh, which, which is pretty serious business. When you overthrow the government, what do you got left? Chaos. So is this is this something that would be completely intolerable in Canada? I mean, if somebody raised his head like Josh Hawley, um, somebody did the kinds of things that Trump is, you know, uh, being shown to have done. 
um, to overthrow the government. What do you think would happen de facto uh, in Canada if, if that were shown? Uh, you'd have mixed reactions. Uh, I mean, uh, but uh, generally you'd have, um, you know, tar and feather them and run them out of town. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it, it's pretty disgraceful behavior. Like the the key to the whole insurrection to me came down to the big lie. And then you end up where you have um, people who in their prior life, you know, spoke truths and seemed pretty sensible. Um, you know, but you even had guys like Mitt Romney shy away from saying this is terrible uh you know and and standing there out of the fear of of you know the wrath of some republican something or other from up high uh you know it just seems uh, really you know un-american that you'd have these people in high places um violating their oath for some idiot at the top mm. i mean my phrase calling trump an idiot i don't know how you could describe him as you know uh, anything that's totally sane yeah so you you know you um you mentioned that uh, that there's a certain amount of divisiveness in canada where some people wouldn't call him an idiot some people would support him I guess, what are you saying in terms of that divisiveness? Well, well, if you take the uh, the convoy that went to Ottawa, you said Toronto, but it really was Ottawa. Um, and, uh, and it shows a big difference between Canada and the U.S. You know, the truckers stuck those big convoys in locations where they totally disrupted the economic activity in Ottawa. But nobody was walking around with guns. Nobody was threatening anybody else. Um, you had some politicians saying, you know, they sympathize with the truckers' cause. You know, well, you know, in the news, did you ever hear, you know, I don't know in America if you heard what what were they what were their grievances? You know, did you hear about any grievances? I'm sure I did at the time, but now you ask me, I, I do not remember there was any one single grievance that stood out. No, they just, you know, were annoyed that COVID had continued and they thought the mask mandates was lasting a bit too long. And, you know, and some of them mumbled about not wanting to be vaccinated, but most Canadians thought that was... <laughs> weird like like our percentage of people that are vaccinated is you know really high like the province i live in it's got to be like 95 percent of anybody over the age of 12 has had more than two shots well, um, that goes that goes then the, the whole ottawa thing goes to the question of politicizing issues which um should not be politicized issues which um you know which 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 clearly uh, should be resolved in, in favor of um, helping helping people, um, and and now we have this uh, incident, uh, this this trucker thing, in Ottawa. Thank you for correcting me on that, um, which was I I believe generated in the United States over COVID, just masks and and vaccines, which is really totally absurd because those things should not be politicized at all. They are to help you. Yeah. Uh, so not, how, how did that happen? How did how did those things, which you know most Canadians, as you say, would be happy to help them, you know, help the larger group of people stay healthy? How did it get politicized? Uh, well, f first, I'd like to correct you that it wasn't totally originated in the U.S. You know, it, there certainly was a big push and a big help and a bunch of financing, and a bunch of the participants were clearly American and American pushed. But, um, you know, there were lots of Canadian truckers on their own that not only went to Ottawa, they went to a whole bunch of border crossings. Like there was a, a border crossing 
between the province of Alberta and Montana, which is is really an important corridor for the for trade. Uh, and there was a the bridge between uh, southern Ontario and Detroit, and and there were truckers separately from the ones that went to to Ottawa that went and stuck their 18 wheelers in the way to purely disrupt all of the uh, flow of international trade. Um, but uh, anyhow, the um, uh, the cause that, that's shooting yourself in the foot also, isn't it? The international trade benefits both both parties to the trading. Um, why why would anyone do that? And well, did they, well, did, well what, why would anybody? Achieve? Why would anybody join the insurrection at your Capitol building? I mean, you you know, some of those people, like you you know, think of the the fellow that um, went in the Capitol with those big horns on. You know, you know, with it painted up like he was in a, a you know, Cherokee warrior or something. Um, you know, you you wouldn't call that a normal person, <laughs> like, like oh. no, normal common sense. <laughs> now, what what somebody's sense of values is, you know, people vary a lot, and and I know lots of people that that um, agree with some of the. Um, the rioters and and the extreme view that uh, you know North America or let's call it the United States and Canada you know should be just all white people and we should uh, you know have uh, uh, you know white supremacy type of thing um, that um, you know really is not a mainstream but you've got enough individual people that have their unique grievance and if you can stir up somebody with a religious grievance and combine him with somebody who doesn't like wearing a mask and combine him with somebody who who heard nothing except donald trump say that election was stolen you know you can assemble a whole bunch of people even though they all have different causes they can all be you know angry and riotous <laughs> you know it's interesting because we've been examining why trump has the base here why trump uh, has people so many people who believe that um, he won that election um and uh, uh why so many people won't watch fox news crowd won't even watch the insurrection hearings uh and, and disregard uh you know all the evidence that that is coming in and so, you know, I think one thing I would like to ask you is, uh, I, I don't understand the connection, uh, why any Canadian, um, you know, would would feel that way. What in the world um, would would politicize um, Canadian points of view about what's happening in the U.S.? It's it's very very small, uh, but you have. Um... You know what I would call uh, some of the far right wing philosophies is what they support rather than Trump the person. Um, you have like Trump's base. Uh, you know, one of the ones is white supremacy. You know, if we keep allowing enough immigration, eventually the white will be diluted and no longer be in charge of what used to be their country. You know, that narrow minded attitude, uh, you know, there are some Canadians that think that same thing. Um, similarly, there are um, business people who um, don't like regulations. Um, you have, uh, and so Trump, uh, you know, chopping the Department of Environment, uh, you know, well, if you were a an executive or somebody whose um, affairs, financial affairs were disrupted because a pipeline was not approved across your land and you didn't make a big pile of money because, uh, you know, the regulations prevented it. You might be so angry about government regulations that you, again, for that one reason only, uh, are, you know, thinking, Trump and the things that he stood for are good. 
uh, you know, you got similarly, uh, you know, a bunch of the religious stuff, you know, is like what seems funny is you have, um, you know, a huge evangelical um, religious following behind the Trump uh, bunch. And yet, you know, the, 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 for the one, one single cause, you know, abortion, they will stand there and back him to the hilt, uh, even in the face of you know him throwing children in jail at the or in cages in the uh, Mexican border. Uh, you know, so you you get for for single causes, individuals will back um, a leader, uh, you know who supports that cause relative to other leaders, and and they you know, their one single cause will in their mind outweigh everything else. So they will simply stand in there, you know, like a rabid dog uh, in favor of that candidate, despite the yeah, fact on that- On all that, yeah, you're right. It's it's, it's catching like a virus. You, you, you support one cause and uh, uh, and you support a candidate with that cause. And, and then you wind up supporting everything the candidate wants from you. Well, and you so don't he necess- gathers power that way. Yeah, you don't necessarily favor all of the other things. Like I, I certainly don't think a bunch of these evangelical uh, people uh, thought that uh, putting kids in the cages at the U.S. border was a wonderful idea uh, and supported that. But they were so um, in favor of his attitude towards abortion that they turned a blind eye to that minor indiscretion as opposed to common sense would say it's not a minor problem no. well you know one, one last thing uh, you know so we will drill down uh, in this show uh on looking you know the view from the north in canada on various issues uh, some of which you've touched on today others of which will emerge as we go forward because we get more news now and more outrage now than we did before but i want to I want to ask you one last question about the insurrection uh, and about uh, the congressional hearings looking into it. And for that matter, um, you know, Merrick Garland's uh, potential investigation or um, investigation such as it is, as we learned yesterday. My question is, is this, is, is the, the, the group of people in Canada uh, who support Trump on these things, uh, who believe the invest- the uh, insurrection was just a, a walk in the park and that the investigation in Congress uh, is not meaningful for them. Um, this, this group of people in Canada, for whatever reason, do they have any political influence? Do they influence the government or anyone in the government? Do they, uh, do they influence legislators, for example, to take positions consistent with their view? And that would be the Trump view. Um, or are they completely left out of town? Oh, they're just left out of town. You know, they're in, you know, when I've got, uh, I've got a friend, uh, a very close friend who one of his kids is, is exactly in that category. And and it's an embarrassment to the parents and, and they, they aren't shy about talking about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that embarrassing or it's deemed to be that out of line and that unique uh but before you leave the the thing on uh, on the hearing uh, you know i had two comments uh, that i had meant to add one is is uh you know the real star of the hearings uh, has been liz cheney she has um, uh, uh has looked good and and that highlights really the most important thought from canada is is we pray that Americans will get their act together. And in particular, we sure wish the Republican Party would would be able to get out of the Trump influence. Like they've lost their way. They don't seem to have any leader or any push to get out of that hole. You know, you can hear from things from time to time, Mitch McConnell, you know, whom I don't particularly like, but I certainly think that, uh, you know, he was blunt about Trump's the guy who brought, you know, 
got the crowd to move there and he's totally to blame and he ought to pay for it, uh, you know, and that's up to the courts, you know, sort of thing. And, and, but, you know, it's really that the get the repo, the shame is that the Republican party does not exist like it ought to. It, it, it's really a negative force right now. And, and that's really everything Canada has angst about relates to the absence of having that second party, you know, whether you're a small C conservative or a small L liberal, it doesn't matter. You, you like to see a balance and you like to see both sides play a role. Angst, you mentioned angst, and I, that's my, I'm, I'm really curious as to what you mean. The Canadians and Canada in general is concerned about what's happening in this country. How, how do they, if, assuming they feel angst, what do they feel angst about? What could happen to Canada as a result of, um, you know, this insurrection, the failure of the um, American experiment? Well, probably be a mess because <laughs> economically, you know, Canada and the U.S. are very, you know, intertwined. But you've got to put that in perspective. Uh, Canada, um, you know, is large geographically, but, you know, we have less population than California. You know, so, so really, um, you know, California is quite different than much of the rest of the U.S., you know, and, and so is Canada. But, but certainly, if you cut off everything that runs between California and the rest of the U.S., what kind of mess would you have? You know, well, that's the kind of mess we'd have. We're as closely connected to the U.S. as, as if Canada were in, you know, the 51st state or we have 10 provinces and, you know, probably, you know, seven of the 10 are as close to the U S as, as any state. Mm. Um, so that, um, but also, um, you know, one would have a militarily or at least, uh, you know, the sovereignty concern is certainly no Canadian would trust Trump any more than they would trust Putin as our next door neighbor. That's a good, real blunt way to describe it. Yeah. Well, we're out of time now, Ken, but uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll drill down on any number of issues to make the comparison in terms of the way these two countries operate and what they think of each other. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks, Jay, and have a good day. Aloha. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.